Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I want to get right to this episode. Before we do, I want to thank you guys for listening to this podcast. I want to let you know the best way to reach out to me is probably an email at jscottoutdoors at gmail.com or through my Instagram account at jscottoutdoors. Just send me a direct message. I want to thank GoHunt.com. They are the title sponsor and have been since the inception of my podcast in 2015. You guys know Cody Nelson, my friend, the glassing guru, the optics authority there, the optics manager at GoHunt.com. If you guys have any optics needs, any tripod, any glassing questions, you can reach out to Cody directly at 602-399-3699. You can text or call him. That is his cell phone. You can also reach him at 702-847-8747. You can email optics at gohunt.com. Make sure to always use, whether ordering online or if you're calling and and call Cody Direct, use the J. Scott promo code. You're going to get a 10% discount. Um, also, you get a 10% discount at the Go Hunt Insider, which has incredible um, mapping now with the Go Hunt maps. Um, it also has amazing draw odds and strategy articles, uh, which is super important this spring going into application season. Go check it out, um, gohunt.com uh, forward slash J Scott. Uh, and if you use the J Scott promo code, you're going to get a $50 Go Hunt gift uh, gear shop gift card um, when you sign up um, just by using the j scott uh, promo code i also want to thank kuyu ultralight hunting i've been using um, kuyu gear since 2010 um, when the company started they're based out of california Um, my late friend jason harrison was the founder of that company and Um, Since Jason's passing, the company has just continued to push the bar of excellence and innovation. Uh, Go to Kuyu, that's K-U-I-U dot com. Um, You can order it's a direct to consumer website. Um, They also have uh, a retail store in Dallas, Texas, as well as the headquarters in Dixon, California. Go to Kuyu, K-U-I-U dot com to order. Uh, I also want to thank Phonescope.com. Uh, Cheston and his guys over there at Phonescope um, make the best digiscoping adapters for your binos or for your spotting scope. Use the JSCOT24 promo code and get a 10% discount on all orders. Guys, let's get right to this episode. Again, I appreciate you tuning in um, and God bless. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I've got my friend Kevin Call of High Point Outfitters on the line. Usually his sidekick, John Adams, is with him, but John can't make it today, so I still wanted to talk Arizona elk and antelope with Kevin. So, Kevin, how are you? Uh, very good, Jay. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Uh, always fun to be with you uh, on your podcast. You bet. Um, want to talk to you about the applications coming up here about a week away. And um, your thoughts moving into the application season here with the guys thinking about what to do with their points and whatnot. Um, how do you see the moisture conditions, as you know right now, um, conditions out there on the landscape? How do you see that right now? You know, I, Jay, I, I think we're in good shape. Uh, we were a little dry in December. Uh, we're here in Flagstaff. So, uh, you know, and, and kind of... Uh, right in the middle of uh, most of the, you know, good elk units. So it's been a little dry, <clears throat> but January's been good. Uh, we've had good rain, snow finally came. Uh, uh, you know, we always love to, you know, get as much as we can uh, as early as we can. But, hey, we'll take the late stuff, too. Uh, looks like next week, uh, first week in February, it's really, uh, we've got a great storm stacking up. So hopefully it'll hit uh, like they predict. Uh, but uh, we're in good shape. Last year, of course, phenomenal weather, uh, phenomenal snow. I uh, had snow everywhere, uh, filled up uh, Lake Mary and you know everything else around. Every little dirt pond had water. So we've, uh, uh, we're coming off a great winter, uh, really average, probably monsoon summer season. A um, little dry in December, but you know we're making it up quick. Uh, January and February, so I think we're I think we're in good shape. I think the elk are going to be great. 
Fantastic. Um, talk a little bit about uh, the elk last year, what you saw there, and how that translates uh, moving into this season here. You know, we had we had good antler growth uh, last year. The uh, with our winter moisture and spring, I mean, man, the antler growth was uh, fantastic. Uh, some of the units were a little spotty uh, on the rut. Uh, uh, you know, we most of my time uh, in Unit Ten on the archery hunt and early rifle hunts. Uh, so did John. Uh, we had great rut. Uh, unit Ten, the rut was fantastic. Six uh, A was. Uh, was good, uh, but a couple of the other units were, you know, a little spotty, uh, and that, you know, just that happens. Of course, it was a little later dates uh, last year, but now overall, we had a great season um, and and really harvested some uh, some great bulls. Okay, so moving forward, um, how was the breakage uh, there in ten? And do you think some bulls got the pass because they were broken up? And you think there's you know some carryover bulls, or did you not see much breakage? You know, on the late hunt, uh, on the late hunt, we did. So I, you know, I think they went in. Uh, they had, their horn density was so much better uh, than what we saw. You know, a few years ago when it was. Uh, the, the drought was pretty rough uh, on them, but I think the horn density was fantastic. So we didn't see a lot of broken bulls. We started to see a little bit on that late muzzleloader and the late rifle hunt, uh, but nothing like we've seen, uh, you know, in the past. So uh, I, I don't suspect uh, a lot of bulls got passed over because of broken horns early, uh, but maybe on the later hunts, uh, you know, we uh, we had some of that, but. Uh, the the horn growth was uh, was so good, uh, the density where they were so heavy. Uh, you know, we just didn't see a lot of uh, broken bulls. I say that I'm kind of thinking here. We uh, we did kill a early rifle bull uh, last year in ten that was broke. Um, so there was a little bit, uh, but nothing like uh, you know like we've uh, seen the past you know five six years. Uh, Especially three or four years ago, we we were really uh, struggling to find bulls who weren't broke. Okay, um, you guys kind of hang your hat on Unit Ten up there. In your opinion, you know, is is Unit Ten trending sideways, up, down? Where do you see the age class? And you know, we kind of had a rough few years there. You know, maybe you know, eight, nine, ten years ago. And and where do you see the trend now? Um, which direction is it going? Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, 10 is doing well. They, they finally, you know, reduced tags, I think, three years ago, especially on that early hunt. They, you know, I think they were up to 100 or 125. I should pull up my sheet to say exactly, but, you know, we're down to 40 early rifle tags. That makes a huge difference. Uh, the archery hunt's been at 100 forever, uh, but the early rifle hunt, uh, they reduced and that you know that just makes a a big difference whether we're not uh, knocking the top off uh, uh, off that hunt so no I, it's 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 doing great Jay I would uh, do whatever I could do uh, right now to get a tag uh, their the age class is strong uh, I think this year antler growth uh, is going to be good uh, yeah well worth uh, uh, chasing. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of units, quite frankly, you know, 6A has got this, uh, it's got a new muzzleloader hunt. There's only 25 tags. That's going to be a good hunt, um, you know, and, uh, you know, 350 to 370 type uh, bulls will be able to uh, harvest those on that hunt, on the muzzleloader hunt. Uh, but, yeah, 10, 10, is, uh, 10 is doing well. Okay. What about some of the others around, you know, the seven, eight, nine, or yeah, seven, eight, nines, maybe the five, uh, five, a five B's. Um, can you kind of go over those a little bit? Yeah. So seven, you know, seven West, uh, is, is off a touch compared to what it was four or five years ago, but seven West, uh, is still hanging in there. We like five B North. Uh, we've all, there's so many elk in six a, uh, you know, people that, uh, want to, uh, get a tag uh, and really have a good uh, rut hunt. Six uh, A is a you know a good uh, a good option uh, for for folks that uh, want to you know just get into the elk and and uh, you know get on a uh, get on a hunt in Arizona. It's just getting so tough to draw these tags, uh, and it's probably not going to get any easier 
so if somebody wants to, you know, chase around, have a great bugle experience with 320, 330 type bulls, you know, 6A is a, a, a great option. Uh, 4A, 4B, uh, again, you know, some tags that uh, can be drawn outside of the premiums. Of course, we all like to, you know, being 23 and 10 and 9, 3A, 3C, 27, uh, you know, we love those units, uh, but not everybody can draw those units. So uh, if we if they don't have a lot of points uh, and they're behind the eight ball, uh, you know, uh, move into those 7, 8, uh, 6, 5, 4 type units uh, and be able to, you know, get a tag. And quite frankly, compared to most of the other states around, uh, can have a, you know, a, a very good hunt uh, in any of those units. Uh, uh, if they're, you know, tired of chasing elk in Colorado and just seeing raghorns, I mean, they can, they can have a great hunt on any of these uh, units uh, uh, right here around Flagstaff. Great. Um, where do you see the early rifle, the you know, early rifle, early muzzleloader hunts? Where, where do you see the standout units being this year for elk? Yeah, 10, uh, 10 is the big spotlight, I think, uh, for us. Of course, uh, 9 had a muzzleloader hunt last year, has an early rifle hunt this year uh, with 20 tags. 9 is going to be good. Um, you know, I think you know, we would put uh, 10A at the top uh, of what we do. Uh, of course, everybody would love to have the 23 north or south, but especially for non-residents, uh, just the lack of uh, tags makes that, uh, you know, near impossible. We always try to uh, get our uh, applicants to swing for the fence, uh, you know, on that first choice and then really dial in of what they would be willing to accept for that second choice. Uh, but, uh, man, that Unit 10 rifle hunt for the first choice or the Unit 9, uh, it really hard to, you know, because they at least have, uh, you know, four tags you're chasing um, in, uh, you know, in the 10 uh, early rifle, whereas in 23, there's only two. So it's just, it just makes it tough. Um, any of those uh, early rifle hunts uh, or muzzleloader hunts uh, are going to be good. But, uh, yeah, we love that unit 10 hunt. Where do you see um, with the, you know, the removal of trail cameras, have you, have you seen any impact yet? Um, positive or negative um, out there guiding or on the landscape or you know translating to the elk themselves um, or whatnot or have you not noticed any difference or change yeah no you know jay we uh, used to run a ton of cameras um, and uh, you know of course uh, unit 10 on the bokeas uh, you know removed cameras years ago so we, we that uh, you know was removed a long time ago and um, we just, you know, it's affected uh, the way that, you know, we get to, you know, hunt deer uh, on the Kaibab uh, more than uh, our elk side. So for elk and antelope, you know, the, our, our cameras, um, they're always fun to run. They're always, uh, you know, fun to, you know, see what's there. Uh, it's probably affected us most in Unit 9 just because they're so susceptible to, you know, coming into uh, a limited number of drinkers, um, uh, but with that gone, I, uh, you know, it, it has, it probably has affected uh, a little bit of the, uh, I guess, uh, you know, selective trophy hunts, or something. Yeah. Uh, trophy hunts, yeah, not knowing exactly what's there, but, you know, we, we, we feel like we spend enough time, um, you know, uh, scouting and, you know, boots on the ground. Uh, we see most of the bulls uh, that are there. Every once in a while we get surprised by a bull that, you know, we didn't, uh, we didn't see prior to the hunts. But, um, uh, but it's, it, it has certainly changed to know exactly what's there, uh, you know, and not having those uh, cameras running. Okay. I um, want to ask you about um, antelope. Uh what what your thoughts are on antelope and some of the units and some of the shining points there for the antelope? You know, man, we're we're continue to do well in five uh, B. We love five B. You know, five A, six A is really coming on. Uh, you know, unit ten continues to struggle. It's always been a producer for us over the years, but 
you know, back, uh, well, 17, 15, when there was, you know, a hundred tags, they just, it just really has, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the antelope got just hammered. Uh, they were having a, uh, what, what helped, uh, unit 10 is they were having, uh, you know, aerial, uh, Coyote uh, predation hunts, yeah. and yeah, and they they were able to you know keep that uh, predation down. Uh, but man, as soon as they came off it, it just seems like you know, it only took a couple of years. They just you know those coyotes just rebounded and it just really pounded uh, uh, the antelope. So you know we're down to sixty tags from a high of one hundred. Uh, it's it's great that they've reduced the tags. They probably need to reduce again. But uh, ten uh, of all the units, ten has. Uh, you know, has has really, you know, been hurt. Uh, but yeah, five B, five A, six A. You know, we like nine seven. Uh, those units uh, have always uh, produced for us, and ten will produce a few uh, good bucks. But man, the numbers that used to uh, be there, you know, just five six years ago, unfortunately, uh, uh, it's just sad to see. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, one question off off topic here. Um, I noticed you do a lot of commercial real estate in the, the Flagstaff area. Um, I'm in real estate as well. What what type of real estate do you do you primarily do? Like, what is your bread and butter? Yeah. So, <clears throat> because uh, you know we cover Northern Arizona, uh, I do. Uh, you know, you, you kind of have to be a jack of all trades. Uh, so we do uh, land, uh, you know, warehouse. Uh, we do leasing, buy sell. Uh, I'm also a business broker. I've been a CPA for 35 years, so I help people buy and sell businesses. So I'm a business broker and commercial real estate. Uh, we've had a fantastic run the last three years. Uh, we had our best year ever last year. Uh, it it will, uh, you know got our fingers crossed you never know how it's gonna you know keep uh, keep rolling but uh yeah it's uh i you know it's it's fun i enjoy it uh and i'll continue to do it as uh, as long as it's fun it's almost like uh, uh guiding uh, as long as it's uh, fun we'll continue to do it uh but yeah so it really uh, a variety of uh investment properties uh we do uh some property management uh for our uh that uh, uh, need that service, uh, but we uh, you know, so we do all all commercial real estate. Fantastic, um, that sounds great. With the interest rates um, being really low, and then you know going up so quickly, and now kind of tapering off, and you know the Fed talking about you know three three uh, rate cuts here over the next um, twelve months or so. Um, how do you see commercial real estate? itself um doing uh here say 12 month 18 month 24 month window you know because we cover uh, <clears throat> most of our stuff is right here in flagstaff uh you know our our pricing has just stayed strong i mean there's uh of course flagstaff's completely landlocked so there's not uh available uh avail- land to uh, you know, to build. I mean, take warehousing for example. There is warehousing is non-existent right now in Flagstaff. You can't find uh, you know either to lease or to uh, purchase, and so uh, and there's not a lot of land available to uh, you know to put that investment property uh, in place. So I I just can't see that uh, rates are going to come off much. Uh, prices. Um, you know, our cap rates maybe have gone up a touch, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, from a couple of years ago. Uh, but uh, really, our, our prices uh, have uh, stayed strong. Our leasing market continues to climb. Uh, it's a, uh, it, it's really, it's a tough market. If you need to, if you need to uh, find something uh, to operate in here in Flagstaff, it's a, it's a tough market keeping our prices uh, strong. Uh, a lot of our, our, a lot of our stuff doesn't even uh, hit the market. We've got lists of uh, buyers, and uh, as soon as we, uh, you know, get a listing, uh, we'll make some phone calls, and it's gone before it even actually hits the market to the general market. So it's a, uh, it is a, you know, fun, fun market to be a part of. Um, you know, interest rates, of course, uh, when it starts to affect uh, investment properties, it. 
it makes it uh, a little more challenging uh, for you know for for sellers and buyers. But we just I don't know. It just uh, you know maybe we'll see some. But it, Flagstaff has been so strong the last five six years. It just uh, it, it doesn't seem to fluctuate much. Uh, in Phoenix, and I know uh, talking to the brokers there, it you know it's jumping around a little bit, but we're not seeing that uh, here at Flagstaff. It's it's just staying strong and steady. Uh, whether that's good or bad, I guess depending on what side of the coin you're on. Yeah, I mean you have those low inventory levels, and I think anytime you have that, um, it keeps your you know your demand is still strong and keeps your prices up. Um, yep. Well, that's great to hear. I'm glad you're doing well with that. Um, Okay, so you're pretty optimistic about uh, potential weather patterns and uh, for people that are applying for elk and antelope moving forward, um, sounds like you're optimistic for another great year. And um, it's always great talking to you and John. It sounds like he's a little bit under the weather and... um, um, but I'm glad I was able to get you on to just kind of get a, uh, you know, forecast of where we're at conditions and whatnot so um what's the best way for people to reach out um or to check you guys out at high point outfitters yeah jay the the best way is to hit our website uh that's highpointoutfitters.net uh you can uh you know see our you know pictures and that kind of stuff uh uh, john and my uh telephone numbers and uh, emails and stuff are there uh, if uh, somebody uh, would like to get, uh, you know, draw strategy, shoot me an email, uh, and it's uh, shoot, so S-H-O-O-T, at highpointoutfitters.net, uh, and uh, I can, uh, you know, help uh, those. It just uh, uh, depending on the number of points you got, what type of hunt you're looking for, if you you know, good with a late hunt, uh, the late archery hunts, uh, tough hunts, fairly easy to draw. But a guy that uh, is proficient with some archery equipment can have some good hunts uh, in, you know, some of the best units in the state. Uh, so it just depends on what type of a hunt uh, you're looking for. We can uh, help those, uh, you know, with a draw strategy. But, yeah, I, I do think it's going to be a good year. Uh, last year we had a great year, and this year is going to be more of the same. Uh, we, uh, you know, the moisture just uh, starting to roll in good in February, and, uh, and January has been good. So I think it's going to be a, a good year. I think all hands on deck to get a tag. Uh, just, yeah, don't miss the deadline February 6th. Make it happen and get a tag and give us a holler and come enjoy a hunt with us this year. That's what I'd say. Great, Kevin. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing with us. God bless. I'll see you down the road, okay? Thanks, Jake. Appreciate uh, it. All right, take care.